Hi everyone, I'm Paulina and I'm a blog admin and vice president at Mental Health Advice. The five stages are denial, anger, bargaining, depression and acceptance. Grief happens after loss. It's a common misconception that you only have to deal with grief after a death of a loved one. Um, loss can also be a divorce, a breakup, a loss of safety, loss of health, um, when a dream you have about your future can't become the truth anymore. In this video I will mostly refer to grief um, after a death of a loved one. Stage 1. Denial. When someone you love dies, you will deal with many overwhelming emotions and as a defensive mechanism against these emotions, you might be denying the reality of the situation. Um, you might think this can't be happening, you might feel numb or you might expect them to show up and stand in front of you when rationally you do know that they won't show up, they won't stand in front of you because they're gone. If you're not showing emotion, if you don't break down crying, it doesn't mean that you don't care. You do care. Um, you're just defending yourself from the intense emotions. And it's very important to not confuse that with not caring. Denial can be useful um, when you need to deal with a lot of hectic things such as planning the funeral, these things on itself are very hard and by denying the reality of the situation you're able to focus on um, planning the funeral instead of getting so overwhelmed by these intense emotions. Stage 2. Anger. When the numbness starts to fade away, um, when we start to realise um, the reality of the situation, but we're still not ready to deal with the intense emotions, we can project them onto anger um, and we can be angry at others. For example, if a loved one dies um, because of an illness, we can be angry at a doctor um, or we can be angry at inanimate objects, at strangers, at your friends, your family. Um, we can even be angry at a loved one. We can blame them for dying while we rationally know that they're not the one to blame. If you blame them, it doesn't mean that you care less. You still care as much about them as before or you still care a lot about them. Um, blaming them is a natural response to the death and your emotions are totally valid. Stage 3. Bargaining. The death of a loved one is something that's completely out of your control, so we want to gain that control back. Um, you might do this by thinking of all the possible scenarios, all the things that you or someone else could have done differently. Um, what if and if only are common thoughts in this stage and you're willing to do anything to make it so that they wouldn't have died. Um, basically it's another defensive mechanism against the intense emotions because if you're focusing on what you could have done differently then you're not focusing on the fact that they're not here anymore. Because you're thinking about what you could have done differently, you might start to feel guilty. Um, it's important to realize that you're not the one to blame. You did what you thought was right, and because of that, it is right. You're not to blame, and it's not your fault. Stage 4. Depression. He will realize the true extent of the loss um, and the impact it has on our lives. Uh, this can cause feelings of loneliness, sadness, regret, emptiness. Um, many people will show symptoms of depression, such as hypersomnia or insomnia, decreased or increased appetite, a lack of energy and concentration. Um, it's a stage where most people are finally facing their emotions instead of avoiding them by using defensive mechanisms. And because of that, 
you, you're feeling depressed because it's so hard to deal with those emotions. Crying spells are common in this stage, although not necessary. But when you suddenly think of a memory, um, you can get really sad because you realize that you can't create more memories with them or you wish you could hug them, hug them one more time or love with them or just be with them. Stage 5. Acceptance. This is a stage that unfortunately not everyone reaches. Here you come to terms with what happened and you accept the loss that has occurred. You are at peace with it. You are not angry anymore and you are not thinking about all the possible scenarios. You are able to integrate the loss in your life and meaning that you can heal and start moving on. It's a common misconception that after you've gone through these stages, you're done and you're not craving anymore. Um, this is not true because later in your life, things can happen that can trigger certain emotions that can um, make you return to one of these stages. Grief is an ongoing process and it's never fully finished. Um, what is true is that time heals all once. It's a cliche. But you will learn to cope with the pain, and the pain will become less and less every year, every month. Coping. There are two very important factors in coping with grief. Get support and take care of yourself. When you lose someone you love, you might want to shut everyone out so that you don't ever have to deal with such a loss again. Or when you're feeling angry, you might be ashamed of what you're thinking. Um, and therefore you don't want to express your thoughts to someone while it's really important to express your thoughts and feelings. If you don't do that, you're avoiding them, um, hoping that they will fade away. When the opposite is true, they will come back and they will hit you harder. Um, good ways of getting support are turning to a friend or family member, um, drawing comfort from your faith, joining a support group, um, talking to a therapist or grief counsellor. You also need to take care of yourself physically because your mind and body are connected. If you take care of yourself physically, you will also notice a positive difference emotionally. Remember that your emotions are valid. No one can tell you how you should feel or how you shouldn't feel. You're the one that's grieving and you're the one dealing with the emotions. None of what you're feeling is weird or your emotions are valid. It's really difficult to deal with the anniversaries. A birthdays, anniversary of the day they died or other important days can trigger a huge emotional reaction. For these days, it's important to plan ahead. Talk in advance to the person who will be with you on that day or during that period and make sure that they know how to support you, that you get the support that you need. Prepare yourself for the emotional roller coaster of the day. If you lost someone, I want you to know that you are not alone. I'm in the same boat as you and I'm here to help you. you it might all seem very hopeless, it might seem as if the pain will never end, but it will. It will get less, it will get better, you will learn to cope with it. <laughs>